Hey guys, what's going on? It's Ben here, and today I'm going to be doing a video talking about Jimmy Butler and where I think he might go in the offseason. So basically, the motivation for this video is I feel like Jimmy Butler has sort of had an odd uh, trajectory the last couple of years. He went from the Bulls to the Timberwolves, spent a year there, then went from the Timberwolves to the 76ers, and now he's going to be a free agent, and I feel like the market for him is sort of mixed and not as clear as it would be in a different season because of the prevalence of other free agents this summer. You've got guys that sort of uh, at the same level of him or above him as far as free agency importance, such as, just to name a few names, Kevin Durant, Clay Thompson, uh, Kyrie Irving, Kemba Walker, and then Jimmy is probably right there. And then you'd throw in some other names that are pretty notable, like um, All-Stars, Chris Middleton and Nikola Vucevic. Um, Al Horford, DeMarcus Cousins. So there's a lot of noble free agents this summer, and I feel like Jimmy Butler has sort of gotten lost a little bit in the mix. People talk about him a little bit, but not a ton. And so this video today, I am devoting to talking about potential free agency destinations for Jimmy Butler and where I think would be some good fits for him. So to get this out of the way first, I'm just going to say, of course, the obvious one would be uh, Philadelphia, who they've said they plan to re-sign both him and Tobias Harris, which is definitely a possibility, but uh, remains to be seen whether or not they'll actually make that happen, but I think it would be pretty cool if they could keep that whole team intact, um, but we'll just have to wait and see whether he decides to re-sign with them or not. And uh, Of course, the other kind of big notable names that people have been throwing around, Tunner, everyone mentions the Lakers with any free agents, so the Lakers are in there. And then um, New York, people keep talking about like maybe Jimmy and Kemba going to New York, maybe Jimmy and Kyrie going to New York, maybe Jimmy and Durant going to New York, or maybe Durant and Kyrie or some other combination of players. But So that's one that I'm not really going to talk about today just because I feel like it's been over uh, overdone and talked about too much. So I'm going to talk about five teams that I think that Jimmy Butler could go to that I don't think other teams are really talking about. Uh, as things currently stand. So I've ranked them from like a uh, team where he would have the least success to team where I think he would do the best or the team as a whole would have the most success with adding him. So the first team I have on here is the uh, Brooklyn Nets. So the Brooklyn Nets have quite a bit of cap space this offseason. They have roughly, um, let's see here, uh, 26 plus 7, 33 plus um, another 6 or 7. So they have about $40 million in cap space, so they could definitely sign him and maybe one other player. So they do have D'Angelo Russell, who is an all-star this year, coming off the books, so they might have to consider re-signing him. But maybe, you know, if you could get him to sign for... 18 million and you somehow get Jimmy at 23 that would be the best case scenario for Brooklyn I know Jimmy probably wants a max deal but maybe you can convince him that it's such a good situation to sign with them of course they could just throw the full 30 some at him and get him but I think what would work best is maybe sign D'Angelo for 16 or 17 and then get Jimmy for like 24 million I think that that would be the best case scenario and I think actually that's about what he's worth but he probably wants more than that. So this is one where I don't know that it would necessarily happen, or that they would want him, but I think that if they could get him and D'Angelo Russell back, that that would be a really cool team to watch going forward in the East. They'd also still have the likes of um, Jarrett Allen, Karis LeVert, and Spencer Denwitty. So that would, be, that would be a pretty good team in my opinion. Okay, next I have the Sacramento Kings. This one's sort of a weird fit, but they do have some cap space coming up. They have about, um, let's see here. So they have about 20 million or 25, 27 million next, this coming off season. And they're not really losing anyone big. To sign Jimmy Butler for 27 million, they'd basically have to give up Willie Cauley Stein, which I think they'd be willing to do. So their starting lineup after this would probably look something like De'Aaron Fox, Buddy Heald, Jimmy Butler, uh, Harrison Barnes, and then uh, probably Marvin Bagley starting at the five uh, with Bielitsa coming off the bench and then probably like Harry Giles as your backup center. I think that this would be a pretty good team. Um, 
Now, the only problem is that, like, Jimmy Butler's basically just a better Harrison Barnes, but I think uh, he would be, like, the leader that this team needs. They don't really have a leader, I feel like, as things stand, and I think, although Jimmy Butler has had tremendous problems with being an older leader and locker room presence, and I don't know that you necessarily want him to be your leader, um... I think that they just need a, more of a veteran presence on this team to guide them a bit. Yes, it could be a repeat of the Timberwolves situation where he mixes with a he mixes poorly with a bunch of young players, but you do have some older guys on here too. You've got Bogdanovich, who's 26, Barnes, who's going to be 27 next year, um, uh, Buddy Heald's going to be 27 next year. Um, so like, it's not like it, every player on the team is super young. So I think that that would be fine. Really, the only young players are Bagley and Fox. And yes, they're big contributors to the team, but you got plenty of guys in the middle of their careers too. So it's not like Jimmy Butler is having this huge culture clash with a bunch of young guys. But I think if they acquired him, they could definitely cement their, themselves as like a... Basically, I think they could be around like a five seed permanently or like a four or five seed if they acquired Jimmy Butler. That'd be a pretty good place for them I think and I really like this Kings team a lot and I think that'd be pretty cool to see them acquire some marquee talent like Jimmy Butler in the offseason uh, okay so the next team I have on here is the Utah Jazz who will have uh, let's see here 32 plus um, about nine so that's about 41 million dollars in cap space this upcoming offseason uh, and they'll have quite a, they'll have enough space to sign Jimmy if they want to sign him and maybe re-sign Rubio or uh, they're probably going to cut Derek Favors because he has a team option, $17 million contract, and they don't want to pay him that much, so they're definitely going to cut him. Uh, so if you signed him, you could slot in like Joe Ingles as a small ball power forward or even uh, Jay Crowder as a small ball power forward. Um and then Jimmy Butler could play a small forward with Donovan Mitchell. The real reason that I like Jimmy Butler on this team is because they really don't have like a second guy who can create his own shot and make plays off the dribble and not need somebody to play make for him. He can just take the ball and play make for himself. And if you need somebody besides Mitchell at the end of a game to take a shot, you have Jimmy Butler as a second guy. And I don't necessarily think that you need to have a second guy who can do the same thing, but I think that it definitely helps, especially for this team who's a little bit offensively challenged at times, to just have a second guy who can uh, find his own shot and just create offense out of nothing if you need that. And so for that reason, I like Jimmy Butler. Just to, He brings a lot of defense, too. They're not losing anything on defense by acquiring him because he is a good defender. So you improve slightly on defense, you improve immensely on offense, and... I like Jimmy Butler on this team. The next team I have, the fourth one, is the San Antonio Spurs, who have, uh, let's see here, 10 plus 10 is 20 plus, they have about $25 million in cap space, which they would use to sign Butler in the offseason. It would mean having to let go Rudy Gay, but I think uh, Jimmy Butler would be a definite upgrade small forward over Rudy Gay. Uh, so their starting lineup after this would look something like uh, presuming DeJounte Murray comes back from injury. You'd have him starting at the one, DeRozan at the two, Butler at the three. I suppose you could flip-flop those guys too, depending on which guy want to play what position. But then you would have um, like Aldridge at the four and Pearl at the five, or Aldridge at the five and maybe Bertans at the four, something like that. Uh, so the real reason I bring in Jimmy Butler here is that you, him and Rudy Gay play in a somewhat, somewhat similar way on offense. Uh, but basically, in Jimmy Butler, you're getting a much better offensive player, and then also an upgrade on de uh, big upgrade on defense, an even bigger upgrade than what you're getting on offense. So basically, you're just getting a much better version of Rudy Gay. And yes, Demar Derozan and Jimmy Butler are pretty similar players. Um, you already have a guy who plays pretty similarly to DeMar DeRozan in Rudy Gay. He's just not as good as Jimmy Butler, so you might as well go out and get Jimmy Butler. Again, if the Spurs got him, I think that they could cement themselves as like the four seed in the West next year and be a pretty prominent player in the playoffs. But it remains to be seen, but this is a team that I thought would be pretty good if they added him. And finally, I think the team where he would be the best fit uh, would be the Indiana Pacers, who have a ton of cap space going forward, more than enough to sign him to a max contract. And I think 
why they would need him was basically because same thing that uh, the the Jazz needed is just another shot creator and another guy who can create his own offense and just give him the ball and let him do his thing. You don't really have to set up a shot for him. You can just let him play make. Uh, yes, they have Oladipo, but I feel like what they tried to do this offseason was add Tyreek Evans to have a second guy to do that. And Tyreek really hasn't performed the way they wanted him to. But if you add Jimmy Butler, that's like an established perennial all-star who can be much more consistent in that role of like co-lead on offense or second offensive guy, depending on however they want to use their team. Also, again, a very athletic wing who's a good defender, a very good two-way player. Basically, at this point, you'd call him like a poor man's Paul George. Uh, it sounds weird because before this season, they were basically even as far as what people perceived of them. But now Paul George seems like the significantly better player after seeing the season play out. But they would get a big upgrade, and I think they would be very competitive in the East. They're already very competitive, but they would even – uh, improve their odds at going far in the playoffs while adding him so that's all i've got for this video guys i hope you enjoyed it i hope you leave your uh, suggestions below if you have any places that you think he should go but of course if you're going to just comment like knicks or lakers or 76ers it's okay you don't have to i i know that those are already very common uh, places that people are suggesting so yeah feel free to leave a comment i'd love to hear from you hope you guys have a good day and i'll see you next time bye